All right, so now that we've got the right ID through the route, we can actually go in and grab this record, which I think it's, let me, let me rerun it just to make sure we've got it right. And by the way, I've heard this comment so much about how, <laughs> you know, especially with parallels or something, how my, when I run the app, it runs so much faster in the videos than it does on your machines. My, my home machine is the one that I rendered my videos on and it's a legit nice machine. So it does move pretty quickly. Um, let's go ahead and run. Oh, I took my stop out. Um, in fact, I'm gonna put the stop up here, which puts it on this brace, but anyway, let's run that again. So view wait list. Of course you're watching on two times speed. So probably, oh, but you're not doing it on two times speed. If only you could put life on two times speed, right? That would be crazy. I I remember this in a talk I heard a while back, and it was so <laughs> enlightening to me, which was the the woman who was speaking said that she remembers wishing that she didn't have to sleep so she could get more done in a day. And then the thought coming to her and saying, why would you want that? <laughs> like, it's so true. Like, why would you want that? that that'd be crazy. Like, sleep is a time to rest and relax and get rejuvenated and why would you want to eliminate that and so it's been eye-opening to me to think about having times in our lives just to rejuvenate in general anyway <laughs> that's not why you called so if i click on edit now george michael booth we get that uh id3 has come in and so if we step now now there's a step into which will go like let's say I call a method, it will step into that method so it'll go shift screens to wherever that method is and then come back. Or I have a step over, which is to just go to the next line in this particular uh, method that we're looking at. And so I'll go ahead and step into, um, in this case, either one would do the same thing. There isn't anything here that's going to take us to a new um, method or anything. But when I do this, it's going to load up this record to edit and I'm gonna look at that and see what's in there. And the results will be this information about George Michael Bluth. So we've got that loaded up now. And then what I need to do is, now that I've got this loaded up, is to pass this information to the dating application view so that it can be populated in that view. All right, so let's see if this works. I'll go ahead and save all that rerun my app. There's been a question about whether you can just leave the browser open and then just refresh, refresh, refresh. If you're only working on the front end, then you can do that. But if it's a page that's being generated by ASP.NET, you can't do that. This, these pages don't exist. They're being built on the fly. And so it, it doesn't make sense to uh, already have it down at the client and make those changes. We have to build the page. And so that's why we have to actually rerun it even though it's a little slow um, to build, the reason it's slow again is because of all the, the technology and benefit that comes along with it that ends up being overhead for us. So anyway, we'll click on the edit again. So I'll click on this and uh oh, what it wants, it said what was passed in was something called an uh, entity queryable and what it needs is a, an application. All right, this one was actually unintentional. Sometimes they're intentional, sometimes they're not. I may need to tell it specifically what I want. So the record to edit is going to be an application, right? But, but the result of this is not an application, the result of this is a, um, a database record, right? And so I need to get this in the right format. And the way that I do that is to say, give me, I think it's a, so, so what I'm getting here is, how do I explain it? This is gonna be a group of data, even though it's only one record. And so we have a different command when we're just getting one record called single. Okay, so the single, now this actually should, we should be able to say var here. 
and I'd forgotten about this. The, the where is given, going to give us a data set, and I think there's a way to convert that into a single, but a single is just going to look, go out and look for one record. Okay, let's try that. See if this works a little bit better. I did have it in my notes, I just didn't read my notes. View wait list, edit, and now we've got the information for George Michael Bluth sitting out there in the dating application. All right, so let's make a change and say he had a birthday, he turned 17, and we submit the application. First of all, <laughs> that wasn't great. It didn't take us anywhere after. Uh, on this submit application action, um, so we got to solve that. But then the other part that's going to be interesting is, um, well, let's see what even happened. Did it do anything in the database? Did it make the change? Let's open our database and go look at the data. And it didn't make the change currently. It didn't do anything. And so I guess the first thing we need to solve then is how do we, on, the, on that save, so we're reusing this dating application um, twice and it's got this um, add blah and it's got this you know save changes after we've added a record um, so we're on that dating application form making these changes so we reuse that form how do we get it to update in the case of an edit so this action is a what this is this is a HTTP get right because we're accessing the the form for the first time and what happens when they post the information? Well, let's just try this. So HTTP post public my action result, and we're going to say edit. And when they edit, what type of information is going to come in? Isn't it going to be an application? And it's even given us a little name here for app, trying to build this code for us. And so, um, and, and let's just for now say return um, the view. Let's just see if we can even get here. So return the view, which we're just going to go back to the edit form. But that's okay. I just want to see, do I even get to this statement when I run this app? So I go in, load it up, view wait list, and then I edit, and then I make the change, 17, submit application. And sure enough, because the view in the action where we are is the edit, it's going to return that view and it's going to have all this information about the, the including the, the updated age about this record. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is make a couple of calls. One is I'm going to call that context file, which has the database and I'm going to update and then it's just update. And then we pass it. What information are we updating with? And so I'm going to say app which is just this variable right here. So maybe I'll call it something different, updated info. Okay, then here I would need to say this is updated info. Okay, so that's passed in. And then after I've updated, then like we've done in the past, I call the context file and I say save changes. So we're gonna update that record and save changes and then return to the view. Okay, let me rerun this because we're going to have a whole new dilemma. So I'm now using the post action. And again, because when I'm editing the record, my uh, action is edit. So when I post, we're going to get right back to that action. I'm going to change his age to 17, submit the application, and, oh, well, this was not what I was expecting, but it is an error. So it's saying it can't find the view edit.cshtml. Okay, let's see if we can resolve this one in the next video. Spencer, out.